happier. Today we're going to start on the reading section with a summary exercise. Just to quick recap. Now, a summary question is actually one of the two in the TOEFL test that is actually worth more than one point. As a matter of fact, it's worth two points. However, when we summarize, we only summarize the main points. So when it gets to summary, uh, the most important thing is to delete details. And in terms of what details are, if you guys remember, Uh, we get the main point is through skimming. So when we skim, uh, that's your first, uh, that's your title, first paragraph, and then the rest of the topic sentences. As a as a warning, I guess. Uh, today's reading, I don't think today's reading is that difficult. The only difficulty actually lies in vocabulary. But uh, if you remember, or let me remind you, uh, when you when you do a piece of reading, try not to focus on the vocabulary you don't remember, because that tends to be just come. Is yes. Edward? Hi. Yes. Um, can you tell me what you learned from paragraph one? Uh, talking about a modern artist. Modern artist or modern art? Modern art. Modern art. Okay. What about modern art? It start from the America's 1880. Okay. And outbreak of 1939. Good. Um, that's a pick out the characteristics about this modern art. So as you mentioned, um, started in America, uh, we have a time frame between 1880 and uh 1939 what else did you learn about in this sentence uh, if you remember when a sentence is long you're supposed to read sentence by sentence right that will be subject verb and object if there are any vocabulary you either skip or you guess so if you don't look at the vocabulary you don't know in the first sentence there should be something else that you can provide me with something uh, special about um modernism in art uh, Varying style characters. There you go. So from the first sentence, your subject, varying style. So many different styles. Verb, characterized, and then we have America, either art or architecture, and we have a time frame, 1880 to 1939. So the minimum you need to understand is, we're talking about modernism in art, but it comes with many different styles. That would be the basic, but let's continue. Um, you, uh, what's the new information in this sentence? Uh, one fundamental characteristic of modernism. Right, but what is that? Um, progressive innovation. There you go. So even though modernism, uh, many styles are under the, the, the label modernism, and the two things that they share, one of them is an uh, innovation. So they have to be, they have to produce something that is different. Um, can you tell me something you learned from this sentence? It says that they think and believe the art should reflect the reality of the modern life. There you go. Excellent. In other words, it has to be something that is real. It has to be something that is within our life and not other things. There you go. Otherwise, before we move on, I would like to point out a few phrases on um, difficult TOEFL vocabulary, actually. Um, here, paragraph one, first sentence, a proliferation of varying styles. Now, proliferation um, actually means on um, um, creation but it has to be on um, fast creation uh, and uh, many different kinds 
So actually, even though you did not understand proliferation, it did not matter because they, <clears throat> excuse me, very uh, mentioned varying styles. Um, but that is the total word here. Other than that, um, Mm, please take a look at the first sentence in paragraph three. We'll start here. And they believe that R could and should reflect the reality of modern life and not, not what? Not focus on the lives of the society's most privileged members. Now, when we say the privileged members or the privileged class, uh, we simply means the rich. Or sometimes we'll say uh, uh, the upper class. And the opposite will be the less privileged class. So that will be the, the lower class, the poor. Okay, um, Jennifer? Yes. Hi. Um, today we are reading about minerals and plants. Can you tell me something you remember from paragraph one? The minerals are required by plants for normal growth. Excellent. Uh, anything else? The soil are is absorbed by the plant with the water bomb, with the water. Right, they absorb minerals through water. Can you um, read the sentence in line four for me, please? Some soils. Okay. Some soils are notoriously deficient in micronutrients and are therefore unable to support most plant life. Thank you. Now, some soils are Notoriously deficient, and um, this might be a vocabulary, but can you tell me, is that positive or negative? Negative. Negative, why? D. D, good, D generally means negative, or because they say they are unable to support most plant life. Yeah. Right, so sometimes there are problems with the nutrients and they can uh, precipitate the growth of plants. And we have an example called serpentine soil. What's a serpentine soil? Good. Uh, and if you don't know the word deficient, at least you need to tell me that it has to do with low levels of mineral. Mm -hmm. That's actually what deficient in calcium means. Thank you. So let me sum that up. Uh, what you just mentioned, um, um, plant growth uh, requires minerals. And sometimes there's deficiency in mineral for plant growth. So some, um, they are necessary, it's a requirement, but you might have problems every now and then. Um, first paragraph is always the most difficult in terms of summary because you read the whole paragraph and there's a lot of information. But after that, second paragraph should be easier.